A lone tiger demon is already quite scary, but what if it's a tiger with nine tails that can take down a hundred people in one go? In this world, evil isn't just the folks you see in plain sight. He might look like a simple country boy, but he's actually part human and part demon. To put an end to the nine-tailed tiger, humans team up to drive her to Men High Mountain Shore. The tiger demon can't escape, so she gives it her all to fight the human encirclement. Why doesn't the nine-tailed tiger leap into the water and get away? Because the Men High Water is extremely scary. Anything that falls into it will turn to dust. So, the demon charges right into the human group to fight for her life. The rain of bows and arrows aimed at the tiger feels like mere scratches. In a flash, the tiger takes down most of the humans. Then, a tough demon master named Xiao Xian arrives and shoots an arrow at the nine-tailed tiger, sending her tumbling into the sea below. The demon masters assume the tiger has died, but she's alive. In fact, she is still protecting her unborn child. Before long, the nine-tailed white tiger gives birth to a child. When the boy is just five years old, a pack of wolf demons surrounds their home. To shield her child, the white tiger sacrifices one of her nine tails. She merges it into her son's body, causing his memories to fade. She then returns to her true form and challenges seven wolf demons. Surprisingly, the white tiger struggles to fight back and is swiftly overpowered. The wolf demon then breaks into the house, but they can't find the tiger's son. He can see the demon, but the demon can't see him due to a protective seal his mother placed. It all began 500 years ago, when the Oriental continent was overrun by demons. To uphold peace, five demon slayers led a group of demonologists to the birthplace of demons, the Peak Valley. They killed the demon emperor and sacrificed their own lives to protect the people. The demon emperor's blood transformed into the Netherworld Sea. It burned the world and divided the once united continent into Fulong, Xianyu, and Juluan. To combat the Netherworld Sea, the demonologists from these three states formed an alliance. They used the Red Pearl to create a vast, 10,000 Li formation. It stopped the Netherworld Sea's onslaught and safeguarded the continent's inhabitants. Since then, the lands have remained unharmed, and peace reigns in the mundane world. 500 years later, demons still attempt to disrupt harmony. But diligent demonologists like Xiao Xian are always on the lookout to catch them. When a black demon threatens a civilian's life, Xiao Xian swiftly draws his sword. With his magical prowess, he saves the civilians and kills the demon right on the spot. One day, a Netherworld Sea Guard alerts Chief Commanding Master Qi Zilu about a crack in the Red Pearl. Accompanied by his mother, Qi Yenren, commander of the Black Camp, and other demonologists, they swiftly visit the site. It becomes clear that they have limited time to replace the pearl with a new one. Otherwise, the formation will weaken, which will allow demons to invade the continents. Xiao Xian, in addition to his role as a commander, is the descendant of one of the demonologists who battled the demons five centuries ago. He's entrusted by his father, Shi Zilu, and grandmother to locate the Red Pearl. His grandmother also gives him a power stone that can resonate with the Red Pearl. It will make it easier for him to find the pearl. With the instructions, Xiao Xian sets out to find the Red Pearl. Soon, he reaches the mountain and uses the Power Stone to navigate the pearl that is only available once in centuries. After securing the Red Pearl, Xiao Xian makes his way home but encounters an unexpected barrier. His attention is drawn to a hanged man in distress. Despite the danger, he approaches the man for assistance. However, he falls into a trap by the hanged man, Huzi. The guards fall unconscious due to sleeping incense. Xiao Xian, however, manages to free himself from the trap. He brandishes his sword and scares Hu Zi away. Upon opening the box that supposedly holds the red pearl, Xiao Xian is confused to find nothing more than a small stone. He quickly realizes that Hu Zi has successfully stolen the red pearl. Meanwhile, Hu Zi makes his way back to his village. He warmly greets an old woman and looks after the village children. He eventually hands the stolen red pearl to one of the kids named Doggy. Meanwhile, Zhao Xintong, the bounty demonologist, visits a nearby restaurant in pursuit of a demon. Inside, he gets into a brawl with some thugs. His combat skills prove superior as he swiftly takes down all her opponents. He then faces the actual demon, who has been masked as the chef. The demon reveals its true form and attacks Xintong with fiery breath. Xintong fights back, but despite her attacks, the demon disappears into the thin air. Meanwhile, Huzi awake from a nightmare to find his village engulfed in flames. Swiftly rescuing his grandmother, 
He aids the villagers in extinguishing the fire. Simultaneously, Xiao Xian arrives at the village and locates Hu Zi. He reveals that the red pearl stolen by Hu Zi has attracted the demon's attacks on the village. Its possession by evil forces can exponentially intensify its power. Determined to locate the red pearl, Hu Zi joins forces with Xiao Xian. Together, they encounter Doggy, who has recently been assaulted by a demon. Offering comfort, Hu Zi inquires about the red pearl only to learn that Doggy has no knowledge of its whereabouts. Xiao Xian decides to search Hu Zi's residence, suspecting that Doggy may have been playing there. En route, Xiao Xian encounters the village chief. The chief expresses joy upon discovering that Xiao Xian is the commander demonologist and the direct descendant of Qi Wuji, a renowned demonologist from the past. This revelation brings relief to the villagers, who are confident that Xiao Xian will assist in ending the demon threat. In their search, Xiao Xian and Hu Zi discover the red pearl in Hu Zi's shoes. Xiao Xian retrieves the pearl and offers Hu Zi some funds for village house repairs. Suddenly, Xiao Xian senses a demonic presence nearby. When he grabs Hu Zi's arm, the demon retaliates with a red aura. Abruptly, the demon vanishes along with the red pearl, leaving the real Hu Zi before Xiao Xian. Initially mistaking Hu Zi for the demon, Xiao Xian attempts to strike him. However, Zhao Xintong arrives just in time to intervene and rescue Hu Zi. Xiao Xian explains how the demon attacked him and snatched the pearl. Xintong then discloses that he is a bounty demonologist and has been pursuing the very same demon, who has a history of numerous crimes. To understand what kind of demon they are dealing with, Xiao Xian seeks his great master's help. The great master reveals that the demon is a blood-absorbing demon that needs time to digest the pearl after eating it. Moreover, he needs to absorb human essence to replenish his strength. It means there is a probability that he will stay in the village to prey on a human for strength. Xiao Xian and others begin their search for the demon. Soon, they come across all the villagers who are now under the demon's influence. Hu Zi faces an attack, triggering a clash between the possessed villagers and the demonologists. Amid the chaos, Hu Zi is stabbed and is surrounded by the villagers. Caught up in their own battles, Xiao Xian and Xintong are unable to come to Hu Zi's aid. Unexpectedly, Hu Zi taps into a mysterious power which empowers him to confront the demon. The true demon reveals itself, having taken possession of Doggy's body along with the red pearl within. Extracting the pearl poses a threat to Doggy's life. However, Hu Zi is steadfast in his friendship. He refuses to harm his best friend. Xiao Xian urges him to remove the pearl for the villagers' well-being. So, left with no choice, Hu Zi delivers a powerful punch to Doggy and ultimately separates the red pearl from his body. Doggy meets his demise, and the demon reveals its true form. He faces Hu Zi in a showdown. Fueled by grief, Hu Zi launches a relentless attack. He manages to stab the demon in the heart, but it survives. Anticipating the demon's move for the red pearl, Hu Zi swallows it. In seconds, he gains extraordinary power. He turns the tide in a brutal battle. With a final stab, Hu Zi successfully kills the demon. However, villagers, including Doggy's mother, blame Hu Zi for their loss. Unexpectedly, he collapses due to the Red Pearl's influence. The Great Master comments that Hu Zi is a genius for not dying immediately after ingesting the pearl. Not only did his inner strength increase, but he also survived until this moment. However, Hu Zi is still in danger because the Red Pearl might absorb his essence, leading to his death. To rescue him and retrieve the pearl, they opt to seek aid from a magic expert, Fairy Ime. At the same time, the villagers expel Hu Zi for the pain he caused. Despite once taking him in as an orphan, they now want to avoid further trouble. Hu Zi accompanies Xiao Xian and Xintong to a nearby city with a heavy heart. Xintong temporarily part ways to inform her family about her well-being. Meanwhile, Xiao Xian, Hu Zi, and Great Master head to Imei's house for assistance. Imei quickly spots the red pearl inside Hu Zi. She and the Great Master try to get it out but can't. Imei says Hu Zi has a strong demon aura, maybe put there by someone else. To extract the pearl, they need to control the demon aura first. Imei has a tool for that, but it's not easy to get. She has set a rule, to get her stuff. You have to win a tournament at the town's fighting altar. The tournament is tomorrow, so Xiao Xian teaches Hu Zi combat skills. Xiao Xian can break a stone with his magic, but Hu Zi struggles to focus. They argue, and the Great Master takes over Hu Zi's training. Hu Zi is grateful, preferring to learn from the Great Master over Xiao Xian, whom he sees as cold-hearted. Seeing Hu Zi's unfamiliarity with magic weapons, the Great Master opts for a simpler approach. 
he decides to teach him an uncomplicated enchantment mental method. As Huzi immerses himself in the method, a golden essence envelopes him. Great Master and Xiaoxian are astonished, as such a potent essence hasn't been witnessed in the past hundred years. It becomes clear that if Huzi taps into even a fraction of the spirit essence within him, he can become invincible. While practicing, Huzi experiences another vision of a woman who usually comes in his dreams. When the Great Master takes a break, Huzi attempts to slip away. Xiao Xian catches him in the act and emphasizes the importance of winning the tournament. He also shares a trick to master the enchantment mental method. Meanwhile, Xiao Xuan's sister confides in their father. She expresses her belief that she should be the one entrusted with retrieving the red pearl. However, her father reassures her not to worry about it and to concentrate on the upcoming examination for the commander-in-chief position. He has confidence in his daughter's ability to succeed. The next day, Huzi, the great master, and Xiao Xian reach the underground arena. Many others have gathered to compete, each with their own motives for wanting the magic tools. Xing Ji, the competition judge, briefs the fighters on the rules. They're allowed to use sorcery, magic tools, or just their fists in the battle ring. Victory is achieved by either forcing the opponent out of the ring or making them surrender. Shortly after, a duel kicks off between two sorcerers, Yu Jizi and Zhu Wang, both armed with their magic tools. Zhu Wang initiates the attack with his fiery swords, aiming at his opponent. Yu Jizi skillfully dodges until he manages a move that shatters Zhu Wang's magic tool and lead him to surrender. The next contender, Chang Da Chiang, enters the battle ring to face Yu Jizi. Although Da Chiang appears tough, Yu Jizi's expertise is evident as he delivers a powerful kick to Da Chiang's chest. Da Chiang pretends to surrender. He then seizes an opportunity to counterattack when Yu Jizi approaches. Although Da Chiang briefly gains the upper hand, Yu Jizi swiftly regains control and pierces Da Chiang with multiple swords. As Yu Jizi readies for another onslaught, Huzi intervenes and restrains the attack. Huzi believes that Yu Jizi should have displayed sportsmanship letting Da Chiang surrender instead of inflicting further harm. A fierce battle unfolds between Hu Zi and Yu Jizi. Both launch attacks and defend against each other's onslaughts. Yu Jizi unleashes a barrage of swords, but Hu Zi skillfully dodges them. Seizing an opportunity, Hu Zi employs a magnet to draw on the swords and delivers a powerful punch to Yu Jizi's crotch. However, Yu Jizi quickly recovers and gains the upper hand. He then lands several hits on Hu Zi. Despite Huzi's persistent dodging, Yu Jizi manages to grab hold of him and delivers a series of blows. After a devastating final assault, Huzi is severely injured in the battle ring. As Yu Jizi prepares for a decisive strike, Huzi surprises everyone by utilizing the enchantment mental method he learned. With a single punch to the chest, he knocks down Yu Jizi and emerges victorious in the battle. Before the judge can declare Huzi's victory, Shintong steps onto the battlefield to challenge him. Despite Xiao Xuan's suggestion to withdraw, Shintong insists on fighting to repair his spear with the reward. The duel unfolds, with Shintong gaining the upper hand due to Huzi's exhaustion from the previous fight. In a move to block Shintong's spear attack, Huzi tightly holds her in an effort to prevent her from using her arms. However, when Huzi playfully touches Shintong's chest, he is shocked to discover that Shintong is not a man but a woman. Enraged, Shintong breaks free and slaps Huzi for his actions. As her hair comes undone, the audience realizes that Shintong is the daughter of the noble Zhao family. Feeling embarrassed, Shintong exits the match, and Huzi is declared the winner of the tournament. Despite his victory, Huzi is concerned about Shintong and wants to apologize to her. He seeks Xiao Xuan's help. Xiao Xian explains that Shintong's father, sect leader Zhao Heiton, was once a member of Tian Gang Hall. After his retirement, the Zhao sect's reputation declined. Aware of the family's situation, Huzi asks for Xiao Xuan's assistance in entering the mansion. Being the cold-hearted man he is, Xiao Xian refuses to help. Left with no choice, Huzi steals Xiao Xuan's badge and heads to the mansion. On the way, someone mistakes him for a beggar, making him enter a clothing shop. Amidst an argument with the shopkeeper, Xiao Xian approaches and demands his badge back. Now aware of Huzi's connection to Xiao Xian, the shopkeeper develops a newfound respect for him. After trying different outfits, Huzi settles on one before heading to Shintong's house. Upon their arrival, they meet with Shintong's father, Zhao Haotian, the leader of the Zhao sect. As Xiao Xian is familiar with him, they engage in a pleasant conversation. However, when Huzi mentions meeting Shintong in the village the day before, Mr. Haotian denies it. 
He states that his daughter hasn't left the mansion in a while. Huzi is confused, as he's certain about their encounter. To resolve the confusion, Xintong is called. She appears more beautiful and elegant than her boyish attire suggests. Huzi is stunned to see her beauty. When questioned, Xintong denies ever leaving the house. She even claims that she hasn't met Huzi and Xiaoxian before. Sensing her secrecy, Xiaoxian dismisses Huzi's claim. He attributes his questions to confusion. Xintong then meets Huzi and Xiaoxian in secret. She warns Huzi not to spill the beans to her father. Meanwhile, Huzi apologizes for his past actions. An odd mix of tension and friendship forms between Huzi and Xintong. Xintong then discloses her motivation for participating in arena battles to secure a magic tool as a reward. This tool is crucial for repairing her mother's broken spear. This is a matter she must handle discreetly so she can keep it hidden from her father. After hearing Xintong's story, Huzi selflessly offers her his reward chance. He plans to approach Fairy Yaimi the next day for the tool Xintong requires to repair the spear. Xiaoxian disagrees as he emphasizes the importance of obtaining the red pearl. Nonetheless, Huzi assures he'll secure the pearl for him before they reach the capital. Huzi's admiration for Xintong becomes evident as he compliments her beauty. Although she appears outwardly angered, Xiaoxian and the great master express disapproval of Huzi's deal. Huzi remains firm, despite awareness of the Red Pearl's potential harm to his health. Whenever pain surges due to the Red Pearl, he employs his mental techniques to effectively manage and control it. The next day, Xintong rejects Huzi's offer to fix the spear. She prioritizes the issue of the Red Pearl as she believes it requires immediate attention. As far as her issue is concerned, she decides to confide in her father about everything and resolve matters with him. Entering Fairy Yaimi's house, the trio discovers a scene of destruction. Yaimi is injured, and the Great Master uses magic to revive her. Yaimi reveals that the Black Wind Demon is responsible for the chaos. Shintong is already anxious because the same demon killed her mother. Meanwhile, Black Wind has begun a killing spree. Shintong immediately returns home and urgently shares news about the Black Wind Demon with her father. Unfortunately, her timing proves ill-fated. Mr. Hout Yin has uncovered her deception. He's boiling with anger over her secret martial arts practice. Shintong defends herself, explaining that she's honed her spear skills for a decade to avenge her mother's death. She discloses that she learned the skills from her parents, but her father changed completely after her mother's demise. In response, Mr. Hout Yin reveals it was her mother's wish to shield her from the dangers of martial arts for a peaceful life. Despite her father's objections, Xintong persists in her resolve. Frustrated, Mr. Hout Yin slaps her and locks her up in a room in an attempt to control her. Huzi arrives to check on Xintong, but he's denied entry. He silently enters the house and discovers Xintong locked inside. He assists her escape, but they are caught by an enraged Mr. Hout Yin. Despite Huzi's attempts to convince him of Xintong's potential in combat, Mr. Hout Yin forcefully ejects him from the house. As everyone is immersed in thoughts of fighting the Black Wind, the demon attacks the entire city. Black smoke envelopes the surroundings as she casts an eye curse on the town's four gates. Simultaneously, Mr. Hout Yin prepares to avenge his wife's death at the hands of Black Wind a decade ago. Shintong's mother had shown mercy and spared Black Wind's life. But in an unguarded moment, the demon retaliates, which leads to her demise. Mr. Hout Yin seeks Ime's guidance against Black Wind as she faced her before. He even blames her for not aiding him and his wife a decade ago. However, Ime accuses him as she had given them a double-headed spear, but still they failed to kill Black Wind. As they argue, black smoke wreaks havoc. It possesses demonic power that captures souls. The smoke constantly combines power as it consumes souls, posing a threat to the entire town within two hours. Fairy Ime advises Mr. Hout Yin to prioritize addressing the danger at the top of the dome. Simultaneously, Xiao Xian employs his magical abilities to decipher the workings of the black smoke. Mr. Hout Yin readies his team of sorcerers for the impending battle against the demon lord. Simultaneously, Xintong's maid distracts the guards and aids her escape from captivity. Despite everyone's efforts, the black smoke shows no signs of fading. Xintong enters the battlefield, and this time, Mr. Hout Yin can't prevent her from joining. Yu Jizi, Da Qian, and Zhu Wang, previously engaged in arena battles, unite with the sorcerers. However, they all succumb to the black smoke, losing consciousness temporarily. Huzi and Xiaoxian collaborate to dismantle the eye formation on one gate. Mr. Hout Yin obliterates the key to the formation on Azure Dragon Gate, 
causing the entire formation to crumble. The black smoke dissipates, revealing black wind to the town. She launches an attack using the heart-haunting ghost spider. To safeguard them, Mr. Hout Yen instructs Shintong to lead the evacuation out of the city. The stage is set for a final confrontation between Hout Yen and Black Wind. Seeking vengeance for his wife, Mr. Hout Yen attempts the Yen Ling Shan move to put an end to Black Wind's reign. However, since no one in the Zhao sect has executed the move in a hundred years, it proves risky. Despite the peril, Mr. Hout Yen takes the chance. Unfortunately, he fails and burns out all the spirit essences in his body. As he collapses to the ground, Ime shows no concern. It appears she orchestrated the events, indifferent to Mr. Hout Yen's predicament. All Ime cares about is who's he engaging in the battle and emerging victorious. She's prepared for the possibility of his defeat, but refuses to intervene. She is confident that Huzi will unveil the secret within him. A battle erupts between Black Wind and Xiao Xian, with Huzi supporting Xiao Xian. The clash continues until the black smoke temporarily incapacitates Xiao Xian. Huzi steps up, but his efforts prove ineffective against Black Wind. Striking Huzi in the chest, she seizes the chance to peer into his heart. Black Wind knows that Fairy Ime orchestrated the battle to test Huzi. Looking into his heart, she discovers an exceptionally potent power within him. Unexpectedly, Black Wind is then attacked by a formidable Huzi, who is revealing the mysterious power within him. Huzi's powerful attack causes Black Wind to vanish temporarily. This break allows Huzi to utilize his abilities to revive Xiao Xian. However, Black Wind swiftly renews her assault rendering Huzi unconscious and once again incapacitating Xiao Xian. Mr. Hout Yin attempts to fight but is too weakened to wield the spear effectively. Before Black Wind can harm him, Shintong arrives. She is prepared to save her father. She dodges several attacks, but she eventually succumbs to one of Black Wind's strikes. As she hits the ground, Black Wind prepares to deliver a fatal blow. Yet, Shintong rises with determination gleaming in her eyes. Executing an extraordinarily challenging Yen Ling Shan move, Shintong moves so swiftly that Black Wind can't evade the strike. She thrusts her mother's spear into Black Wind's heart, achieving victory. Even Ime has not witnessed this move in 500 years. Despite being injured, Mr. Hout Yen expresses appreciation for Shintong. He now recognizes her as a source of glory for the Zhao sect. He repents for not acknowledging her talent earlier. However, now he finds solace in her for avenging her mother. With these words, Mr. Hout Yin breathes his last and departs from the world. Shintong grieves the loss of both parents. Tears stream down her face. The townspeople now hold respect for the Zhao sect, speaking highly of Mr. Hout Yin. Meanwhile, the great master and Xiao Xian rush to bring Huzi to Imei to save his life. In his risky state between life and death, it becomes an opportune moment to suppress the demonic aura in his body and retrieve the pearl. Imei employs the Furba tool, the very instrument that had slain the demon emperor 500 years ago. With this, she successfully retrieves the red pearl. In a flashback, it's revealed that the nine-tailed white tiger, which fell into the sea, managed to survive. Before long, the tiger gave birth to a child, and that child was Huzi. At the age of five, a pack of wolf demons surrounded their home. In a bid to protect her child, the white tiger sacrificed one of her nine tails, merging it into her son's body. It gives him power and causes his memories to fade. She then reverted to her true form and confronted seven wolf demons. Surprisingly, she struggled in the battle and was swiftly overpowered. The wolf demon breached the house but failed to locate the tiger's son. Although Huzi could see him, the protective seal his mother placed made him invisible to the demon. The demonic aura in Huzi's body is a result of his mother's tail which she sacrificed to protect him. The premature cracking of the Red Pearl triggers havoc in nearby villages, as the Netherworld Sea unleashes destruction. Urgently responding, Xiao Xuan's father, Mr. Zilu, along with his daughter Yen Ren, arrives to supervise the evacuation efforts. Learning of Xiao Xuan's loss, Mr. Zilu instructs Yen Ren to recover the Red Pearl. In her pursuit, Yen Ren encounters bandits, but she swiftly stops their attack with a single powerful move. She ensures the safety of her mission to retrieve the precious red pearl. During the rites for her father, Shintong is interrupted by Wu Haiden, a royal sorcerer. The man disrespectfully stops the rituals and shatters the memorial tablets of her ancestors. Witnessing this, Shintong's anger flares uncontrollably. In response to her inquiry, Haiden explains the injustices his family endured for the past 500 years. 
He recounts how the Zhao family gained renown for slaying the demon emperor, but they overshadowed the Wu family's contributions. He highlights the forgotten sacrifice of Wu family members in the valley battle. He also explains that their loss was an error by Xintong's ancestors. With Zhao Haoyan's demise, Haydn is determined to hold Xintong accountable for the perceived wrongs committed by her ancestors against the Wu family. Xintong and Haydn engage in a fierce battle, but Haydn gains the upper hand by poisoning all the guards and family members with deadly silk. Faced with no other choice, Xintong surrenders and kneels before Haydn. After humiliating her family, Haydn departs. Because of the disgrace, Xintong is resolute in seeking revenge for the insult to her father and ancestors. On the other hand, Huzi still hasn't regained consciousness. Fairy Ime reveals that Huzi's primordial spirit is on the verge of breaking apart and is immersed in the ritual world. Now, someone has to enter his virtual world to wake him up and bring him back to reality. Using the primordial spirit separation technique, Xiao Xian delves into the virtual reality and urges Huzi's younger self to accompany him. After a struggle, Xiao Xian successfully shatters the virtual reality and brings Huzi back with him. As the tiger's tail shows itself, it becomes evident that Huzi still has a demonic aura within his body. Meanwhile, Yen Ren arrives at Imei's place. Upon seeing Huzi transformed into a demon, she uses her powers to restrain him. She informs Xiao Xian about the red pearl shattering that caused havoc in nearby villages. She even humiliates him for the delay in retrieving the new red pearl. Xiao Xian, learning that his father entrusted Yen Ren with the pearl, willingly hands it over. However, Yen Ran is fueled by a desire to eliminate the perceived demon in Huzi. As she attacks, Xiao Xian intervenes. He reveals to her that Huzi is not a demon but an outsider who implanted the demonic aura in him. Yen Ran remains skeptical until he may confirm Xiao Xuan's explanation. Faced with the truth, she promptly returns to the capital. In the meantime, Huzi awakens. The magic tool in his body can control the demonic aura, but it has left him weak. To fully remove the energy, Xiao Xian resolves to bring Huzi to the capital. The magic tool broken by Imei enables Huzi to regain his memories. He finally realizes that he is the son of a nine-tailed tiger who sacrificed one tail for him. Despite remembering, Huzi hesitates to tell about his past, fearing others' mistrust upon learning he is of demonic lineage. Recollecting that the werewolf who attacked his mother bore a royal sorcerer token, Huzi believes the capital holds answers to his mysteries. Grateful for Xiao Xuan's assistance, Huzi prepares turtle soup. However, when Great Master drinks it, his nose begins to bleed due to an overdose of 15 herbs, which Huzi added for Xiao Xuan's fast recovery. On the other hand, Xintong chooses to disband the Zhao sect in town. She plans to take the royal sorcerer exam in the capital to restore the Zhao sect's lost nobility. Because she saved the town from the Black Wind, people reach out to her. They apologize for past remarks and urge her to stay. Now, valuing the Zhao sect for their help, the townspeople want them to remain. Moved by this, Xintong decides not to disband the Zhao sect. It's decided that she'll go to the capital for the royal sorcerer exam while her uncle will manage the Zhao sect in town. On the other hand, Fairy Ime warns the great master about Huzi's demonic aura and the potential consequences if not controlled. In a revealing flashback, Ime's cunning game is revealed. She imprisoned Black Wind for 10 years, using her demonic power to create magic tools. She saw Huzi as a perfect vessel for her plan. Ime orchestrated Black Wind's attack on the city to assess Huzi's potential. Her actions were driven by a personal plan. If it weren't for her own agenda, Xintong's father might still be alive. The next day, Xintong decides to join Xiao Xian and Huzi on their journey to the capital. Before they depart, Fairy Ime presents Xintong with a new spear crafted from her parents' two spears. Imei also warns Huzi to be cautious with his power to avoid harm. The trio begins their journey to the capital, enjoying skewers along the way. 